All right, so on today's episode of Entrepreneurs in Vehicles, Getting Beverages, or Yivgeber, as it's lovingly being referred to across the nation and even the world, we have Robbie Amaro. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, and I've known him for a while. He's like a semi-pro volleyball player. Robbie can jump surprisingly high for a guy of his height. And uh, I guess launching some supplement line as well. Everybody's got a supplement nowadays. And then the other guy is Paul Conyers. He's like nine foot six or something like that. I think he's the tallest person that's ever lived. He's an entrepreneur and also a comedian. He loves stand-up, he's very funny. He's building a career for himself as a stand-up comedian, which is awesome because that's also something that I'm focusing on at this point. And uh, there's nothing a comedian loves more than setting the expectation that everything they say is supposed to be extremely funny. They love that. Actually, ironically, Seinfeld, I remember he told a story about how he went on stage somewhere and the MC entered him and said, you know, coming up next is the funniest man in the world, Jerry Seinfeld. And he just went up and bombed because people are like, oh, make me laugh, funny man. So I want you to set your expectations extremely high with Paul put that pressure on and expect him to just kill you with every single sentence. So they're doing some email marketing stuff, which I actually want to hear about because I'm like world class at that, if you didn't know. We're in the Jag yet again, in the XE, the angry teenager as I like to call them. So we're going to pick him up and then we are going to keep it a surprise what we're going to do because it's my show and I get to do whatever I want. And we're going to drive remarkably slowly through traffic and I'm going to try not to lose my mind. <laughs> Gotta love traffic. Entrepreneurs in traffic killing people. Yiv gaba, yiv gaba, yiv That's gonna be the theme song. So let's, yiv is like a verb now. We're gonna yiv gaba. Do I look handsome? Am I ready to meet these cool people? Ring. This company blew up. Ring, that thing's killed it. I just wanna say, before this gets started, what a miserable dickhead I think Ian is. <laughs> I mean, it's like pick an accent. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hey! Uh, what is this? It's remove trees? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's, What's up, up dude? dude? How's it going? It smells well, how are you doing? like a lumberjack. Good. How's it going, buddy? Hey, God, I gotta get on my toes just to hurt you. I know. God, look at Jesus. Jesus. You, you haven't seen my new house, by the way. Stop. No, I haven't. Yeah. This is great. Oh, you're in. Wow, you gotta even have a, like a real fire now. I feel like you should be doing this like like Ty Lopez. I mean, oh, we've yeah. got we've got Ly right here. I mean. <laughs> Yo, let's have this to my house right here. This is where I live. <laughs> you can see the man cave. Paul okay. spilled a beer in there last night. That's the first one we should have been spilled. So. Well, I don't think we need to give a chronological <laughs> list of everything I've done. <laughs> wow. Look at this, huh? Obviously. Plans for world domination. <laughs> That can't be read. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, what you cannot read my writing? These, this is, these are genuine notes that this fucker is taking. That's real. That's yeah. The, that's no. how I, yeah, that's how I take yeah, notes. Yeah, it looks like real, he, it looks like real deer keeping you. Maybe. He looks like he wrote it with his toes. Learn company. <laughs> looks, yeah. This looks like what somebody wrote, like they learn. were trying to learn about entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so learn company. <laughs> Do we learn what company mm -hmm. is? Is the shuffleboard the same size as Paul? Uh, I mean, more or less, <laughs> he just, yeah. he just What we did was we took my, my fibula and just uh, <laughs> carved it and sprinkled some, some dust on it and now, now it's shuffleboard. Look Nothing this. more comforting than seeing this on somebody's <laughs> stand. <laughs> it says the sniper on how to kill people from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, literally proof that my money meditation works. I just found money on the ground. Wow. <laughs> I have no idea whose it is. It's, it's just it's a yours, random. Man. You that found is it. I really want you to have it. I, I will take it. Very do you cool. have Mario Kart? We oh. Do. Are you good at it? Oh, yes. I, I'm, I'm honest about this. I'm very good at really? it. Really? Yeah, I, I, I don't know these levels uh, or anything. <laughs> entrepreneurs in the imaginary vehicles. Yes. <laughs> not yet drinking <laughs> beverages. Okay, that's like the same height as you. You got a huge advantage. No, I don't. <laughs> you are you are being facetious. Yeah. I guess so like, whoa, 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 that is a cool level. This, this is like this a, is really cool. This is like Toy Story. We're also on like 150 cc, so the computer is super good. This is the coolest level. Okay, you give me a fucking motorcycle with a broken tire. Literally, look at no, it's got no, a broken no, he's, tire. He's dragging fine. Back. He's fine. He's, he's a good guy. Nobody's ever wanted to be Luigi since Nam. Uh, I. <laughs> 
resent that as a well as a guy who yeah oh, likes yeah. Luigi. Yeah, as a little brother, damn it, I <laughs> love probably Luigi. had to be Luigi well, because yeah, you're a little brother. And yeah, that's we what don't you would do. We we don't have a lot of choice. Little shit. Oh, eat Ooh. my fucking asshole. I'm chilling. Oh, first place about to get butt munched. Oh no, I'm first place. This is a problem. Hey, we're playing. This is first round. Oh. What oh, no, the you fuck can was that? You what did I just use... do? I got it, it I'm fucking second place. God damn it, son of a. You can't tell it really God turned sharp. Oh, I gotta get him. Come on. I've not gotten fifth got... since I was fucking born. This oh, is... man. Don't record this version. <laughs> this <laughs> this not makes the final cut. losing ever. I, I literally there was a time in that college was... where I threw a controller. And I almost hit my friend in the head. Are you one of those guys that like breaks, I was the, a, breaks oh, the Wii screen? No, I've never broken the screens, but I used to. I've broken controllers for mm, sure. Okay. I used to smack. I used to. I don't like losing. Well, we uh, played. Well, so we're gonna it. do this again. I don't want a motorcycle. <laughs> Give genius. me a fucking car. Give me four goddamn tires. There, there's, there's, there's a. Car. See, here we go. This is Look a, at that standard car. There we go. See now, now I feel okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna freak out now. Oh, let's go to the dry, dry desert. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just like every girl you've ever been with. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. Uh -huh. That was terrible. Yeah, that's how I emotionally maim you before we yeah. begin. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I've really been lampooned here. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look yeah, at more the, like no poon. Oh shit! It, just, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop or get funny. <laughs> Entrepreneurs in imaginary cars firing turtle we shells. Have a, uh, I... Come on, come on. Oh, oh you sick that son of a me. sausage! That was me. I want you, you to know. You literally fucking. I want you to know. I looked at your little toad face and I, I shot you. I'll do it again. You know what? One of legitimately on one of the most so depressing things in the world, and this includes all sorts of bad things that can happen. Yes. Is driving in between two boxes in Mario Kart. Oh. I mean, I know there's like the gulag and there's like slavery, but <laughs> but, but then you have missing a box in fucking Mario Kart, and it is sheer depression. Let's ruin my. That'll career, make please. the final cut. <laughs> I need to be able to see. To oh, drive. cool! I uh, if the you go on the water, it washes yeah. it off. That's cool. Damn, I'm in fourth. This sucks. All he needed was one. <laughs> One initial round! That's it! Motherfucker, go oh, buy me a fucking win. coffee. Winners win. It's <laughs> ready to get in the, the Jaguar. Is that what we got here? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is a British car. Hey, is, is this thing on? Watch this. Are we lit? Oh, yeah. Wait, no, that, that actually that's might not be the worst thing I've ever done. Other than the fact that you're putting a bright light in front of your face when you're hey. going to be operating a vehicle. Hey. Hey. Uh, safety second. All right. Okay. Okay. You've heard that saying, right? I have. I have heard that. He said so it we got a couple options. We could take off traction control, put it in dynamic mode, and really mm -hmm. get yeah. Fuego. Okay. And what's Fuego mean? Spanish for so cool. My seatbelt doesn't work. That's scary. No, it does. It should. <laughs> My seatbelt doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Loser. <laughs> If I were looking into this car, I would be wondering, you know, <laughs> who on? is the famous people in the car? I'd be like, wow. Well, that guy looks like he has around 1,200 to 1,300 followers on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, dude. You know what is actually interesting? So I used to be very, very stingy with my likes on whether it was Facebook or Instagram. Oh, yeah, you can't just like, go whore out I don't, I don't whore them out, but it was like, very, like even if I, like, I just, I just didn't really do it. And then as they've changed the algorithm, I realized that if I don't like something that I actually want to see, I won't get to see it again. Yeah. I don't think many people understand that, but if you don't like it, it's just not going to show up. Mm -hmm. But even mm -hmm. before that, whenever I would see yours, I always liked them. Because I think it's just like seeing somebody doing stand-up and making a real go of it. Oh. Like, because I don't often feel like, oh, I'm inspired by this person, but I, I felt inspired. You feel by inspired it. by me? I do. Oh man. <laughs> oh, just so just so you know, in the intro, um, I said that you're one of the funniest people in the entire world. Oh, and, oh and, Christ! And to sake. set the expectations really high. Uh huh. I said I said there's nothing a comedian likes more oh my than God, when people set it. the expectation oh my that God. everything they do is supposed to be funny. So Dude, I, me I, I that's why I don't I don't like. He like, uh, so pissed at me. I yeah. That's he why would, I don't I'd be I don't. Like, oh, he's the funniest guy I know. You gotta meet him, and he's like. 
Come on, man. I can't be on like yeah. 25. I had a bad day. I'm a, a deal human. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm a human. I'm a person, god damn it. I just broke up with my girlfriend. Yeah. I, I'm sad today. I, I can't uh, be on And then Robbie's you. like, I don't care. Oh, I didn't know breaking up with your girlfriend was an issue. Yeah, I didn't mm. know. I thought you, you were, were funny. Weak. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I didn't know you okay, were. well, I guess you need to go to bed then. Yeah, huh? I guess okay. you gotta, you know, you guess not coming to the party. Or, or. I do think, though, that people that have never done stand up or comedy don't understand that there's nothing more annoying than. I don't tell people I do stand up. No, I don't I, mean, I don't do it very. You are legitimately, like, in the pursuit of it yeah. at the moment. I'm, I'm going to be far more, but, like, if you tell people, everything changes. Also, oh. one of the worst. Is this a bit? Yeah. Are you practicing a bit? <laughs> I'm gonna be practicing a bit of killing you <laughs> in a second. Yeah. Uh, it's like you can't tell a story. Maybe and you're like, maybe it is. Maybe it's yeah, gonna maybe, be. Yeah. Maybe it's gonna, gonna be until you interrupted yeah. it. I'm working on the pacing right now. Here's some funny shit that happened to me. I want to share it just like anybody else. A part of your bit came up and. In- when we were out last night, somebody came up to him. He's like, the guy was talking to him for about three seconds. We said, you know what? How tall are you? Oh, yeah. I mean. And that's a big part. Like, that's one of his best jokes. Is- well, yeah. It's usually how I start. I start a lot of shows well, you like gotta, that. You got to address it. You got to address whatever, it. Yeah. That's what I found is it is very similar to copywriting in the sense that you've got to enter the conversation in their head. Like, for you, Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'd actually. So for you, it's like, oh, you're very tall. You address all the things they yeah, can ask yeah, you, yep, right? exactly. What do you get? So what do people ask you every time? You're really I mean, tall. Yeah, like do, you, do you play basketball? That's pretty much it. And then they want to, you know, like, oh, I was like, yeah, I played in college. Like, oh, cool, college, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, they tell you about another tall person in their life. <laughs> <laughs> and that's supposed to like forge a connection. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, how tall are you? I'm six seven. You're like, oh, you know, I had an uncle that was six seven. I was like, Drew? Is that you talking about Drew? I loved Uncle Drew. Oh my god, he was the best. And yeah, it's. I mean, I, I don't know. It's like, what do you, what do you think I should do with that information? Like, I, I have that with England people. Oh, you're oh you're from England. Yeah. Do you know Tom? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Tom. Oh, I fucking love Tom. We uh, go to the same pub. Yeah. <laughs> out, of the, out of the ten yeah. million people in London, right. of course I know Tom. Don't bother with the last name. I already <laughs> yeah. know who he is. God save the Queen. Do I yeah, love Tom? Of course, fucking love Tom. What a guy. <laughs> when you start your sets, do you always start out with height? Not always. I'm trying to uh, to not have to rely on it as much. I'll, I'll, I'll usually address it, but, but it's, I think it's important. It's it, like, I don't think it's relying on it if it's like one or two sentences to open because people are sitting there thinking. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. As soon as you walk on stage, they're like, oh shit. Like especially if it's a smaller, you know, smaller venue, then you're kind of like taking up a lot of the room. I'm scared for this surprise. I'm not. I'm ready for it. All right. This is uh, this is where I live. So okay. this is the abode. Love it. This is the living room. This mm-hmm. is where food doesn't get cooked. Okay, all right, that's um, very nice. Oh. Uh, here are my Chewy boxes. Chewy.com, if you're watching, support me. <laughs> I will advertise for you. Do either of you have any sort of athletic skills? Uh, a couple. Paul, Because there's a ping pong table. Night. Oh God. Robbie beat me in the basketball arcade game. So there are only two things where I'll openly just say I'm very good, which is ping pong and Mario Kart. Right, yeah. Yep. Good. <laughs> that nope. last spot was so real. <sighs> Look at that. See that? See that, Robbie? See that? That's how you. That's it's called. Oh, it's called controlled chaos. <laughs> I still want to hear more about the uh, the standing up with the uh, talking about being tall. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it is really good to uh, to a step. You know, like if you're if you're like a really big comic, you know, it's like, or you have gigantic boobs or whatever. It's it's just good to it's good to talk about it, like address the obvious right out of the way. Like you said, it's a lot like copywriting because you got about 15 seconds to to win people over, and they're judging you before you even open your mouth. Yeah, so. they have all these preconceived thoughts about who they yeah. think you are. Exactly. And, and then they, if you're, and especially if it's things that they don't like. Yes. Do something, hit it as hard as you can or do something cool. Okay. Let's see if I can, see if I can. Okay, well that, that I don't think that's it. Jesus oh, Christ. Shit. I think you put a dent in your wall. Kalicha. Hey. Hi. You didn't get Hi. to exercise today. Hi. So my parents won a bunch of tennis tournaments this summer in Europe and they got paid in uh, a lot of Hennessy. Oh, really? Like a ridiculous amount of cognac. So, oh. uh, 
I have not used any of it, so I have so much cognac. Good lord. <laughs> this is gonna be a problem. Over the, uh, toilet yes. It's just, give the speech that won't ever be, you know, aired. Yeah, this will not be aired. Uh, Erica, this is... I, I'm, I'm better, I'll, I'll be better someday. I don't know. You have to air that part. Looks Whoa. like I'm advertising. So this is me, this is what I call preeminent strategy. Is okay. if I just put a bunch of Jameson products in here, then at some point they're gonna be like, hey, we saw your remarkable show and uh, we wanna sponsor you. And then, yes. boom. You know, not that I need it, I have all of this stuff. Right. Anyway. There's yeah. a Jameson mirror, we got Jameson glass, we got Jameson Boy, that drink. A, that is a lot of Jameson stuff. Yeah, we need Data Guild to work for Jameson. All right, we'll bring it all out. Oh my God, this is great. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, that's fucking sick. Isn't that sick? Dude, that's so dope. Cheers, guys. Yeah, Very cheers, man. Cheers. cheers. Hell yeah, thank you so much. Cool. Um, and we, the studio worked out. It's dark out, Dude, so we were like, it's not going to cool. be lit. This is it's really like, cool. This is actually pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked on I'm this. I'm not going anywhere. This is going to, you're going to have a lot of tape. Dude, uh, this is going to be, <laughs> I, I, I will not stop the stand-up talk for yeah. fucking anything, because I don't get to talk about this to people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, and this is like, this is the stuff where I'm, I'm always, I'm hesitant, especially nowadays, to talk about certain goals, because I feel like when you tell people your goals, like especially in a public manner, you get all the affirmation as though you've already done the thing, and mm -hmm. people act yeah, as though like, oh right. my, like it's like I always use the example. People are like, I'm gonna have a billion dollar company. I'm like, right now you're doing three million, mm -hmm. that's wonderful, mm -hmm. but stop identifying yourself as a person who's going to do all these things when you haven't right. done these things yet. Because I did it, like I've done that before. It's like I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, yeah. and everybody's like, you're so impressive. Yeah. For the things that you've thought and of then doing. You start congratulating yeah, yourself. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, but, and then also I think there's some power to keeping some shit to yourself. Like, they do say that. I mean, I, I, th I have experienced, I've seen people proclaim goals over and over again. Mm -hmm. And if it's that works, if also if you're super shame based and you have a really unhealthy relationship to what you're doing and you need other people to shame you and make you feel like shit to do it, maybe it's not that important. Yeah. If you yeah. need other people to be like, you're a piece of shit if you didn't do it. There's something else going on there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They, they, they've done studies about like New Year's resolutions and actually like telling people a, about your resolution to quit smoking or lose weight or whatever, uh, it, it increases your chances of failure because of that. People are gonna like congratulate you and then you're like, wow, I'm, I'm really doing this. And then, yeah, it's like course, I've already done it. Yeah. And then, you're so brave for yeah. having an idea. <laughs> exactly. Oh my yeah. God, you're so brave. <laughs> it's like, yeah. do, the, do the thing. So I, I hesitate to like, talk much about it because like my my secret sort of goal with all these things is like I look at stand up as you know and I it's really just been the last like six to eight months where I've started to really decide what it's going to be for me and how I want to go about it mm -hmm. because I've just had so much fear around it because it was this thing that was so important to me yeah. that I'm just going to hide over here and I'm going to talk about sure. I'm going to make money my priority and I'm going to keep these other things as these you know and not that there's nothing wrong with money at all. It's like, or like I'm gonna make work or I have too many. It's like, no, yeah. it's just that I've been that afraid. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, dude. And, well, and then also for me, it's like, okay, well there's no, you know, and I, I said this the other day, but it's like I have the, the bit that I open with now, which is like, there's nothing worse you can be in stand-up than an in yeah. shape, reasonably good looking white guy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like, there's yeah. nothing funny about healthy white people. Right. <laughs> um, it's, and that's, it's such a good thing. Man. I appreciate it. It's I like, wish I, it, I mean, yeah. I well, it's what, I, what happened is I had these conversations with friends and then I was like, well, um, I don't think I can, I was like, I can't say any of that on stage. And then I'm like, well, fuck it. These are the conversations I have with my friends. Like, why don't I just start telling them the truth of what I really yeah. feel? Yeah. And so I start out with that and people are like, oh, that's what I was thinking. I thought I didn't, you yeah. know, I didn't like you. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Basically, I'm like, no, you don't look at me and go, I, I think I really like that guy. Yeah. Look at me and yeah. go, I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't want him to do well. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't want yeah. him to do well at anything. <laughs> don't you dare be funny uh, as well. So like, cause I have my, my buddy John Berry who actually I wish he was here, but I, like he's, you know, he's a half Asian, half white dude who's 40. And like he gets, he doesn't look 40, which is part of his bit, but he like gets on stage mm -hmm. and you see him walk up and you go, I really hope he does well. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. just has that way oh, like that's I like great. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't have that at all. No, like, not at all. People not like, I hope you do badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, and in, I mean, I've uh, when I bomb, it's because I lose. I like totally lost miss. them at the beginning. I lose them at the beginning because I I have to make a decision on um, what kind of what kind of crowd it is. Because if I feel like, if it's a big crowd, then I'm fine. Because no one is judgy in a big crowd. There's uh, enough like 
like they're exactly they do, they're there's like going to be enough people that are going to be into it that they're like because because what when i walk they on don't the, feel like they have permission to laugh because you're a good looking white dude yeah 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 when i when i uh when i walk on stage uh and i'm doing like a big show or something like oh really the first thing i'll say when i grab the mic is like all right who ordered the tall vanilla latte and <laughs> it uh oh, and it, I like that. uh, that's a good joke no it's it's a good joke but it when it doesn't work I should, I could like put the mic back. I'm like, okay, well, all right. You're not gonna like the next shit. Uh, because, I think, I hit, like, I think that's one of the most important things though, and it actually relates to copy and selling and everything is, every, the first sentence, so I tell people like, if you wanna, if you wanna change a sales letter that's been running for a long time, I did this with one of uh, Mike Geary's offers actually. Uh -huh. He had had, it had been running, you know, it's been running for years. Yeah. And, it, and the first, it was one of, it wasn't Truth About Abs, it was a different offer. And I was like, the first line is like, hey, I'm Mike Geary with the Nutrition Watchdog. Yeah. yeah. And I literally was like, let's get, cause I used to do this on every uh, every video I did. It's like, hey, I'm Ian Stanley with, fit, with fixed water and I'm about to, but that first sentence, nobody gives a fuck about you right. until they care about why they should care about right, you. Exactly. So you start out by saying, I'm this. I don't care who you are. The only right. time I do, if I'm doing like Ken Cardone or Lai yeah. Topaz, I have to say the name because that sets the frame for yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you say your name, so literally we got rid of his name for the first sentence, mm -hmm. this am this, we just went straight first sentence, 20% lift. I think it's 22% lift on an offer that's been running for that. That's tens yeah. of thousands of dollars a week. Right, 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 right. Right, from one sentence. So when you do stand up, that first <laughs> line, I sit there in the crowd and I think, what am I gonna say first? Yeah. And it's like, you have to, I made, I one time I like, there was this crazy chick and I kind of made fun of her and I, I learned from that and I'm like, don't, there's no reason to ever go up and, I didn't make fun of her, I was like, oh, I was gonna dance the whole time but she did this thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, oh, that, it seemed mean. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't meant that way, but it's like, oh, that first line. Yeah. Like, don't use it for, like, because the one, the, like, the second set I ever did, I didn't self-deprecate at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I went right in, and it was very average. Yeah. yeah it yeah. was also a way different set, but I also thought that every time I did stand-up, I had to do a different set. So did I. Because I had friends who were like, oh, you're going to go do stand-up. Yeah, and he's like, don't do the same thing. Would you like to hear why I quit stand-up for six years? Yeah, because that's what it was. I I did my first set at Rooster Tea Feathers Comedy Club in Sunnyvale, down out in California, uh, in the Silicon Valley. Great club, and they came a uh, bunch of our college friends, just fifteen screaming drunk people, and I killed because that's what you do when you do your first stand up set, and all your friends were there and drunk and like they were laughing at shit. Like I was clear my throat and they were laughing, you know. But I, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I, it was. I, I was it a good set? It was a good was set. Good. I, I prepared, I worked, I worked hard at it, and, uh, and I had fun, I was loose up there. It was good, you know? I, I don't think if you had left the club, you're like, I, I just found the next fucking George No, Carl, but you, you went know? like, this guy but, just did his first ever set. Yeah, 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 and it was, it was fine, it went great. But the problem was that I uh, just had no idea how stand-up works. So what happened was, I mean, I'm riding high. I'm like, I'm God's gift to comedy. This is like, I guess, I guess I'll see all you guys at the top. I'm going there now. Do you think that there's a, <laughs> do you think there's a higher high than killing it in standup? Not for me. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't know how, I don't know how there could be. I mean, I, dude, it's like, I, dude, I, I want, especially when you're not known because they do like, you'll hear like Kevin Hart and Louis C.K. and Bill Burr. They'll tell you like, dude, it's, it's too easy now. Bill Burr actually tries to lose them intentionally. He tries to lose the audience just because- To, to like be real. Just because he's got to have somewhere to go because- I think that's the difference at the top level too. Even I remember Louis C.K. saying he, at one point he just started opening with his closer. Yeah. With people that don't understand yeah. comedy. Like Unbelievable. You close with your best joke because yeah. that's what you do. He right. opened with his closer yep. to fuck himself. He said, he's like, I'm gonna screw myself over. Yeah. I'm gonna hit with my best joke. Yep. And then see what and happens. And now I have, now then that made him work on something else. The other thing that was now his closer, now he had to make that the best joke. And once yep. he did, he moved it to the front. It's incredible. That guy is a master uh, uh, comic, also a master baiter. Uh, <laughs> In front that of was, yeah. Sorry, that was too easy. Uh, <laughs> that was great. So I had, I had a great, whatever, I had a good set. I'm riding so high. We have a friend who is friends with this guy. He's one of the biggest up and coming comics in the country right now, and he was back then too. Um, He's gonna. He's filming for Comedy Central in April. He's got some stuff going on with Netflix right now. He wrote for Family Guy, uh, and he's just been better to me than anyone I could ever imagine. His name is Kabir Singh. He's fucking hilarious. Go watch him. He's great. 
we had a friend of a friend who knew him and he like sight unseen was like, he was like, will you give my buddy a shot? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm doing like a San Jose Improv show. Biggest club in uh, our area. Big time. It's, <laughs> it seats, when it's full, it's, I think it seats like 500, but even on the bottom, when it just sells out the bottom, which it does for like most smaller shows, unless a national headliner's there, it seats like 250, 300 people or something. And, uh, and so I did, for stand -up. what's that? It's a good amount of people Fuck, for stand -up. Yes, yeah. it is. Uh, so I, I was like, just, I just had so much ego and I was like, dude, I'm fucking, I'm, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do the improv. Like I was like, who the fuck am I? I'm gonna do like, the improv. I'm gonna do the improv. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the improv, it'll be fine. What happened was, I mean, everything that could have possibly gone wrong went wrong in eight minutes. In eight minutes, I almost torpedoed my dreams. Well, we didn't make it in either. You didn't make we it in, but I was like fine with that. But I'll tell you who did make it in, Erica, my girlfriend, and all of her friends, because I didn't want them to come to the first show in case I sucked. I was like, oh, you I'm did great. different material though? You didn't do the same thing? I threw it all out. Robbie, Robbie was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, dude, I did all that material. I'm done. So I took oh, unproven, dude. untested, and half-written material to the San Jose Improv. From little, just from your arrogance of like. Just from my I've... arrogance. Uh, and so. But, but it I, makes sense, dude. Com the, the world of comedy is so unknown to yeah. people. It's you, so you fucking have to, weird. You have to fuck up so tremendously before you, over and over again before you're like, oh, okay. Like the, and that's, that's the shitty part about comedy is that the only way you learn is by like, oh, that was embarrassing. Like no one, no one like, oh wow, that's a great, you're like, I've said I, this, I killed, I guess I learned the lesson. There's nothing else where you have to publicly fail in real time, mm -hmm. in front of people, in person. Yeah. In order to yeah, become good. Exactly. And often you can write the people and be like, that you oh, care that about sucked. the most. What I wrote sucked. Yeah. Well, I don't need to show anyone. Yeah. Even if you did a Facebook live or a video and it was like, oh, that wasn't good. Either you don't publish a video or it was yeah. live and you're like, I didn't have to feel the lack of laughter. Mm -hmm. Cause stand up, yeah. speaking, it makes speaking the easiest thing in the world. When you speak on stage, like after yeah. you've done stand up, speaking is so easy. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause you're like, like, I don't, I don't even have to all make the laughs laugh. are just like, yeah. they're bonuses and yeah, they make exactly. it better. But the, it's, it is binary. People laughed mm -hmm. or they didn't. They didn't go, he didn't make me laugh, but he had an incredibly good point about politics yeah. that I really enjoyed and made yeah. me think, <laughs> no, you're not up there, to, you're not right. up there for yourself. Or yeah, to like, exactly. You're up there to make them laugh. Exactly. The moment I got up to that green room, where there were real comics, I knew, I was like, this is not gonna go well. This is gonna be <laughs> something that was just, it was just in the air. I was like, this is gonna be really bad. And uh, also, this was back in 2010, the San Francisco Giants were playing uh, the Texas Rangers in what would be their first World Series win. And so the entire Bay Area is in a like fever pitch of like, oh my God, like we, we might win. And they were playing game two in San Francisco that night while I was on stage. Uh, and uh, just, I mean, when I say everything could have gone wrong, everything went wrong. Yeah. I went out there, I think I did like, I was like, oh, fuck the Rangers. And I got like, you know, applause. They didn't know I sucked yet. And so, uh, but then I started doing, <laughs> I did this bit about like, I was like, I'll segue into how baseball's boring. Hot take Conyers. Oh. Uh, and everyone's like, like we love baseball, like our team's playing in World Series, like this is not- This is not the time. This is not relatable at all. Like if, if I told that joke in fucking March when we didn't, you know, when we were bad teams, then yeah, that's fine. But like people are like, no, we're kind of into it now. And- uh, Let me shame you for the thing that you're yeah, currently Yeah, so I in. was eating shit. And I mean like, like no laughter at all. And in a room that big, it was cavernously silent. I, here's the coup de gras. Here's the cherry on top. I kicked the microphone cord out and everything went silent and I had to like pick By accident. Them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I kicked it out because it's a wired mic. My and cords are hard. Well, they're not that hard, but they're really they're hard not that if you've easy never, either. you gotta know you just, you know, line up the prongs, press the button and you put it in. It's, it's pretty easy if you've done it before when you've never plugged in a microphone and you're in front of 300 people, including like good friends and your girlfriend and your hands are trembling. Oh, yeah. It took me about 45 seconds, which you, that's fucking Oh forever. my God. Yeah. I, I did it in Dallas recently. I, I, did, I didn't kick it out, but it, it yeah. came out when I did it and I just, uh -huh. I think I was trying to put it back in. I was like, I can't get it in. I was like, oh, story of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, no, I mean, that at least is, you know, pro people probably laughed then. I was, I was like, uh, uh, and I got it, I got it back in. I got it back in and uh, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going back to the old material, which was the only smart decision I made. But the problem was that they were kind of darker jokes and 
they were like not feeling me. You can't do dark stuff if, if, the crowd if they're not in. So yeah. they were like, ooh. And then the Giants won the game while I was on stage. So a and woman so jumps up in the third row. She's like, Giants win. Everyone gets the updates on their phones. They start high-fiving and cheering. And then I have to bring them back to this personal oh hell that I'm, I'm injecting into everyone's evening. And uh, they just, they feed, they were lighting the sh They were like, get off the fucking stage. They were lighting me so hard. And I mean, that was it. And I just kind of like, I've never felt lower. You know, like everyone's got that thing where uh, they've got that thing where it's like you're driving or you're in the shower and you just think of that one thing and you, you're like, Argh! like you make a sound. That was my thing every fucking day for six years. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I- Tell them what got you back though. Yeah, I'd love to hear what brought you back from that. Uh, a, a college, a guy I went to college with uh, was down in LA and he like started doing standup and it, it like, I it, like I had a physical response. Like I was like, I wanted to throw up. I was like, I am so much funnier than him. And but then like, who like who fucking cares? Nothing. I was I was I was just pissed at myself. I was like, nothing is owed. The comedy like comedy is not gonna come looking for me. You know. So like when I when I said those words, like I'm so much funnier than him. That's when I was like, I'm so disappointed in myself. Because when I, you realize all of your triggering doesn't have to do with the other person. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to do with the fact that he's not, he may genuinely not be as funny as you. Yeah. But he's uh, doing it. That's why when people hate on people's stuff, yeah. I'm always like, if they're doing it, you at least got to respect the fact that they're doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, and it's, and it's so easy to not like a comedian when you're watching them half interested on Facebook. And you're like, oh, not funny. This guy sucks. What happened to comedy? It's like, dude, it's, I mean, it's different when it's yeah. live. But I mean, yeah, that, that was not like, he, I don't, like, I never heard one minute of his stand-up. I have no idea if he was good at it or not. Yeah, because there are not funny people in real life who are very funny on stage. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, he wasn't, like, a not funny guy. He was a jovial guy. He's really enthusiastic. And I was like, okay, I mean, I could see him doing comedy and not being bad at it, for sure. I just knew. I was like, dude, like, that was supposed to be my dream. He never talked about it to his friends, drunk in college, where we would be hammered in his room. And I was like, dude, someday I'm going to do it. And I was in Chicago with, uh, with my, taking a family trip with my girlfriend and, and her parents. And that's when I saw it. And I, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm sorry. I have to do it. And she was like, okay. Well, you know, I mean, I'm sure she'd heard it like a hundred times. She didn't know what she was getting into. She had no, I, I mean, neither did I. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, then I, I got back in. I did. It's 2016. Uh, when this I, is only a couple. So this is only just before I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This met was you that the, you had just started doing stuff. Yeah, I was only six months in. That was the weird thing is that like he was in, introducing me as a comedian. And I was like, I'm not really. Well, dude, dude I hate. Dude, dude, seriously, too. being hearing when people say comedian or they say you're funny and stuff. That's why I did it at the beginning of this. Yeah. This is a joke, but like, it's and that, obviously that had a reaction. Yeah, but it's the worst. Like, even if because what if it is a night where you're like, I just want to be a person. Yeah. I don't want to, and I don't want to perform in general. I spent yeah. most, I, I personally spent most of my life performing. Mm -hmm. Like just oh, yeah. life was a performance. It's yeah. like, I'm this character and here's who I'm supposed to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. and like here's the person I actually am. And I don't, in certain moments I feel inclined to be funny and in certain mm -hmm. moments yeah. I don't. And so you don't want to feel that pressure of going in and then everybody filters everything through that lens. And yeah. then it's like, no, that's, and it's also like, you don't want to taint the thing you love. Like, yeah, comedy is this beautiful thing. It's, it's like I you mean, don't want to then feel pressured to have to be funny and shit. Mm -hmm. I do just want to say really yeah, quick, I didn't ahead. do it out of spite. Like it was oh, not. No, it that was sound, the, the it leading. Didn't sound like that. that was what finally broke me. But what I mean, I watched like, you know, I, I watched. I, I remember watching Gallagher stand up with my dad, and I was like, oh shit, this is a job. And then when I saw George Carlin when I was thirteen. Uh, my parents were not happy that I was watching it, but uh, but then that was like that's what comedy could be. That's that's it. I'm what, do done. You, what do you think though? So in that moment when that guy was like, he's doing stand up, what did you, you felt like I'm funnier than him. Yeah. But, but like you said, it wasn't about him. It, was it wasn't, about yeah, you. it wasn't so about what, him. What about that moment changed your decision to be like, cause there's a difference between again, being angry, having an it, idea and then going up on stage and being like, I'm doing comedy. Yeah. Once I had that thought of like, I'm funnier than him. What like, scared me was that oh my god that's all i'm gonna be 
that's all I'm gonna be is is that guy that's like, yeah, I could have done stand up. I was fucking hilarious. I these ki- these these kids are they're they're not funny. I'm funny and nothing like I that like that idea made me sick. I was like I was like I actually like see myself in the future just watching someone do comedy and you know friends laughing and stuff and me thinking like fuck god damn it. and then and then what do you have you're just another guy it's like yeah I could have gone pro could have gone pro I just didn't you know coach didn't like me I didn't feel like it and I was like dude there's nothing sadder to me than uh someone that like didn't do what they really should have been doing and they you know, it's, I think Jim Carrey said, it's, it's fear disguised as practicality. You know, I tried for six years to like, hey, I'm making good money. This is great, right? We're going on vacations. He, that same, so in that same speech, the one I know what you're talking about, it's yeah. funny that you bring that up. I, mm-hmm. I still send that, I think, in my email course. It's one of the links of mm-hmm. like, hey, go watch this one minute video. Yeah. And it's the part where he says, you know, he says, my father was a mm-hmm. really funny man. Oh, yep. And yes. he decided to be an accountant. Yeah. He's like, that decided, that made, and he decided to be an accountant. Mm-hmm. And he took the safe route. Yep. And when I was 12 years old, mm-hmm. he got fired. Mm-hmm. And I learned that you can fail at what you don't want to do. So you yep. may as well do what you love. Yep. And that fucking blew my mind because I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. You realize, and also I majored in, I, I majored in business management income with an emphasis in accounting. Cause I, Did you really? Yeah, because I, I wanted to go in the FBI. So you're good at numbers. I'm actually, yeah, so nobody thinks I would be. Yeah, I would I'm like the last uh-huh. numbers guy. And it's, dude, it's really weird. I'm like savantish with accounting. Really? I got 100% in my first ever class. I was like, I guess I'm good at this. <laughs> I, I don't like it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, like, I did my own well, taxes. Did, well, I did, I, did my own, <laughs> I did my own taxes. Like, the first two years, I did my own taxes and I took them to my buddy's dad, who's like a really good CPA. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, and he goes, You've literally done everything. He's like, oh, one thing is like gas on your car. And I was like, what? Like, I don't know why, but I'm good at accounting. Mm-hmm. But so, but I did it because I wanted to go into the FBI or CIA and then I wanted military and I wanted to go and do all that oh, stuff. Really? Wow. Yeah, that was all I cared about was joining special forces and so cool. doing that and then going in. So the FBI though, there's only five ways to go in. One of them is accounting and another one is law. Another one's language. And I can't remember mm-hmm. the other two. But so accounting was one of the only ways to go in. But yeah. then I also realized I don't want to do I didn't want to do financial crimes, mm-hmm. but so I did accounting. But so when he said accounting, I was like, it even hit. My mom always used to say, yeah. which I, I was doing what I wanted at that. When I first saw the video, I was already like, I was writing copy yeah. at home. Right. Like I was living in San Diego. I loved it. Mm-hmm. But I my mom would always say after college, she'd be like, well, why don't just, you know, just go, just go get, you could get your CPA, be an accountant. And I said, do you want a dead son? Because yeah. I will fucking kill yeah. myself. <laughs> like, if anybody knows me, yeah. can you imagine me being an accountant, no. like, behind it? Like, there's zero chance. Yeah. So it's like, I get, and that's the good thing, I think, about having a personality type where you hate the things you hate, mm-hmm. is that you hate them so much that you won't tolerate them. We talked about it on the way to go get you going through traffic. And I'm like, I'm like, most people spend their lives. I was like, I was like get a picture of this. Because mm-hmm. it was just a row. There was a, a down hill and then an up and it's just a row of red fucking brake lights I'm like this is what most people spend their lives looking at and I can't stand it and I would not allow myself to live that life which isn't to put down people who live that life it's just to say that I despise it enough that I could never tolerate exactly and that's what's but the the hard part about things like the the great place to get to is where you can start to get to a place where you change things because you'd prefer if they were different, like because it'd be life could be even better as opposed to life got so bad that I had to change. Yeah, it. right, right. Where it's right. like, oh, I don't like this. I'll change it. As opposed, to like I fucking can't stand this for another day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what most people have to get to. Yeah, I can't. Oh, yeah. They look in the mirror and they're like, I can't even look at that. How what I yeah. look like that's anymore. Oh yeah, that's what I, I. I just couldn't put on another pair of khakis. But now he's in a place and where we, we talked about this yesterday, and I guess the last few days we're like, holy shit, man, we have total control. Yeah. Of our lives, like we. This well, is what the illusion. The, illu- the illusion. You have the, you have control of the most important things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do. You do. We, you have the you have control of the things that that matter most. You have yeah. time of, of your schedule oh, and of time. your ability to mm-hmm. where you live and things yeah. like that. And it's just it's never do we ever dream that we'd be able we we'd be in this place and we'd both be in this place. Yeah. Right. Like as yeah. college people, all we wanted to do was like. Oh my God, man! If we make eighty k, like that's no, oh, yeah, we yeah, have yeah. got now. If I don't make, if I don't make eighty grand a day, yeah, if I, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we. That's we didn't know. No, I totally. Yeah, his parents told him one thing. My parents told him, and and as roommates, you know, 
growing up together. We were kids, mm-hmm. and all we knew was like, hey man, we do, we gotta pass these tests and right. apply for jobs so we can like you know pay our so bills. So it's normal, but that a, did that fail at, at what you don't want to do? Oh yeah, because you yeah. don't see that as a possibility. Yeah, exactly. Because people say so. My mum would say so. My mum goes, "We'll just real. be an accountant." Like you know, well what what. You never go. What if I have failed as an accountant? Like yeah. you, at least fail at the thing you yeah. really want to do. At least yeah. be like, I knew this, and and I, yeah. we were all we were all athletes. So it's like yeah. we I'm understand. We cool. understand. Yeah, and you're still and you're still doing it. And I actually, the other thing in April that I'm planning on doing is actually playing tennis again because of all the shit I've done with Brent. Good. I've hated tennis so much my whole life. I played and I actually didn't fucking hate it for the first time. Oh really? And yeah, which that is like the. I told him when I did my first intensive with him. I said. He's like, you know, you might actually like tennis again. It's the third night of my tennis. And I was like, if you make me want to play tennis, you're an actual wizard. <laughs> There's zero chance. <laughs> uh-huh. And then I played, I played a pro tournament this summer in Germany. And I was like, I was like, whoa, I, I didn't fucking hate that. Like, yeah. I didn't hate it, which for me, that is what, what did you a hate? huge experience. Did, Everything. Like, so, did it make you angry? Or oh you know, my like God, dude. It I don't know if... if I, I would love if we could find old clips and you could like show me literally drop kicking rackets. Like we had old camera clips, like oh really? Drop kicking rackets, throwing them over fences, punching walls, punching myself Jeez. in the head, screaming. <laughs> no, like ex- so that's the funny thing is people You're know me. People know me as I am as like I pretty laid back and then yeah. but there's the intense side and the intensity of that person is so insane that I had like it was so overwhelming. <laughs> But so what I learned over time and is that when I was losing in a tennis match, I wasn't losing a tennis match. I was failing as a human being. Ooh. And so it's actually funny that's because uh, that's, yeah, so that's like. Me. That's me every time I lose. You just give dude, me chills. Dude, you need to, uh, dude, I, I, you, can, you, can get rid of that, like, you can get rid of that feeling. Oh, I would not tell you that if I didn't believe right it. Now, dude, no, dude that, it's, that's, that's how I feel when I lose a game. It's, well, and it's, it's that your identity is that I am this person. I am a volleyball player. I am a tennis player. I'm these things. So then you are challenging who you are, even as stand-up. If you, if, I don't know if you have this, but it's like, oh, if, I, if, I, if you bomb at a set, it's like, I am a piece of shit. It's like, no, you had a bad thing. Yeah, and it just, I mean, if I, I, I have bad sets and then I'll just be driving home, you know, no radio, and I'm like, I'm like, wow, Paul, that was really fucking funny. Boy, you are, you are proving everybody right tonight, man. I, I, they, they were rolling in the hallways. You were so goddamn funny. I think you got a, I think you got one laugh. That's, that's phenomenal, man. I remember like I lost a competition and I was like, wow, that guy's done stand up eight times and he beat you already. How about that? What a, what a, what a savant you are. I mean, you are just, you're the next Robin Williams. I, w- I want to like laugh more, but I've, I've experienced this so yeah. much and it's sad to me. And yeah. like, I've now, I, and I don't say this as like a better than like, I've worked through so much of this shit and mm-hmm. I used to experience it. I still had it. Like, uh, I went to, I was up in Canada, uh, and with, this is the, so I, you know, I had fixed, right, the water company, yeah. and I, I, I sold it to this company up in Canada, and I go up there to film and do the stuff, mm-hmm. and they have a ping pong table. Uh-huh. And there's a guy there named Dallas. Dallas, if you're watching, fuck you sometimes. <laughs> 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 so, so Dallas and I go play ping pong, and, uh, and I, don't, I don't lose much in ping pong, and I don't like it at all. And so we go in, and I'm like, like I'm up there, like I've sold them the company. Yeah. We're like filming. I'm excited. We're working on all this shit. Yeah. But I lose a couple games in a row, and I like because somebody you lose one, and you're like, okay, I go, let's. Figure. I lose like, I lose like, I think it's three in a row. I le- I go, Dallas, I've got to go, and I leave, <laughs> and I leave the office because I'm like, I got to keep it together. <laughs> Don't want to blow the sale. <laughs> I leave. I leave the office. I walk out, this is in Kelowna in, in Canada, I walk out to where there's the lake and I sit on the bench and I just hear the thoughts start coming up. But it's so different now because there's this person, there's the part of me that's out here listening, listening yeah, to the yeah. thoughts I'm having and then there's the old me having the thoughts and I'm going, oh, you're a real pathetic piece of shit. Yeah. It's like, you, I, literally, like, because what I hear, what, I, what I've always heard in sports is you don't even deserve to live. You are a piece Jeez. of human oh, shit. Wow. Why would you even fucking pick up a racket. Yeah. Oh my Why gosh. would you even, you don't deserve to touch a racket ever again. You are yeah. fucking pathetic. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, and then there's me, like the actual me now up here who's yeah. listening like, dude, that's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like, you play ping pong with a dude inside a fucking office and you lost and who cares? Yeah. yeah. And then I go and then I'm like, all right, I go, I go back and I'm like, okay, let's go. And then I'm like, let my adult like be on board and think. And I go and I take, I literally, I take a step back 
Literally, this uh -huh. is not a figurative sentence. I literally take a step back from the table, uh -huh. give myself a little extra time, yeah. win every game. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. But the thing is, is like, so this is very real. Is in tennis, I never did this. Was be, I was so emotionally involved in what was going on that yeah. I could never step out and and actually assess what needed to change in order to win. Oh. So I actually was able to because I was because I went and I dealt with myself and was like okay emotionally coming back in I'm like hey what could I actually change what is functional in this moment that uh -huh. I could change and I was like yeah. I'm too close to the table because yeah. I the th like I was like I'm I am a better ping pong player than he is if he's just better it's like all right that person might be better uh -huh. but it's like no that's not the case something I'm making the mistakes I'm defeating myself mm -hmm. so I'm like okay if I step back I get myself a little more time suddenly I'm winning but it was that ability to step out because the thing is, is when you're leaving a set, right, and you've just had a bad set, mm -hmm. the part of you that is just beating the shit out of you, instead, if you look at that time as time, you could be like, hmm, that's really interesting that piece didn't work. I wonder yeah. why that didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead of 20 minutes of making yourself feel like shit on your way home, and it's, this isn't even just about getting more out of it, it's just like, hey, I really wonder what could I learn yeah, from this moment? Because right, right, right. it has nothing to do with you. The reality mm -hmm. is, your self-worth has nothing to do with that moment. Mm -hmm. You had a bad performance, yeah. or you had a shitty audience, or you had some yeah. outside right, circumstances right, 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 right. that have nothing to do with you, but we take on these things as though we are the ones who we made yeah. them. There are times when it's like, hey, I did make a mistake and I need to own up to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. for the most part and stuff, especially in stand-up, dude, you have no idea. People could have all just walked in and like all had a weird bad moment. Mm -hmm. The person who went before you, I've seen dude, comedians this all the time, they take their depression on stage. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it's like, people oh, yeah. don't come here to be depressed. Yeah. They come here for relief. Oh yeah. And they come here to laugh. Yeah. Don't, don't bring in more of your stuff on to, it doesn't mean don't talk about depression if you have it. I'm saying that yeah, there, yeah, no, there, no, are, of course. there are funny ways to talk about yeah, depression. Of course, of course. And there are fucking depressing ways to bring it up. Yeah. And yeah. so I totally understand those feelings and I've had them. And so what I'm curious about now is what could I do now that I'm not a complete nutcase, yeah, right, right, what right. could I do? Yeah. But now I don't need to do that to be okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. But the comedy thing is where it does hit me. Is like, and I had a friend say this, actually Ron Lynch, it was Ron Lynch, really? he said this to me, this is like a year or two ago, he goes, let go of the tennis thing. Cause I, I didn't want to play, I didn't play, right? right. I, I put my fucking, mm -hmm. my, my brackets in the clothes. I don't play tennis. So I don't, since I've lived here, I've played like four times in four years. Yeah. I've, I've barely played. Yeah. But the, maybe 10 times overall. But he, uh, um, he's like, just, because I still have that beating myself up a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Like, what yeah, if yeah. I could have, and he's like, stop. He's like, you know, stand up's a thing for you. Like, you, you know, that's still there. And I'm like, well, what if I, what if I did just go through life and I never did it? Mm -hmm. How would I feel? How would I feel if I woke up, and I literally said this, I said, if I woke up at 30 and I wasn't doing stand-up still, I'd fucking kill myself. Mm -hmm. And that's not, I don't, I, I haven't ever had depression, I don't have like suicidal thoughts. Yeah. It's just that literal for me. Yeah. If I spend my life saying no to the thing that matters most, mm -hmm. I don't want to live as that person. Yeah. I don't exactly. want to be a person who's saying no to myself mm -hmm. every fucking day. Should I see, let me see what JV said, where the place would, do you want to try and do stand-up tonight? Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I'll go at this point, I don't. Well, I, yeah. guess, I guess you guys should take a shot to that. I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I will. I'm not going to. That's but the other I, thing, too, is like, dude, I haven't drank forever. You can you have all these thoughts about people watching somebody going and you're drinking. I don't fucking care. Yeah. I get to live my life in the way that I want to live. And I'm it. still, like, processing that. Because I'm still, like, I, I spent my whole life of, like, okay, nine yeah. to five. I spent six years doing it. And yeah, I've only not been... I've only not been doing it for three years, and it's like, oh fuck, this is a Monday, and it's like, blah blah, you know. But dude, it's that like, shit. Okay, but I think that's super important to not get over that. I've never that there was there's one video I actually did. He he did some with, but like of uh, I think one of the reasons that I've been happy, even pre all the work I did of like still feeling pretty good most of the time. Yeah, was like the work on myself I did was that I've had this idea is most everybody's everybody's three quarters of the way up a mountain. Everybody's climbing some mountain. Doesn't matter what it is. Your, yours might be a fucking hill. Somebody else's is Everest, mm -hmm. literally, right? But you're three quarters of the way up this mountain, but everybody's standing there, looking up at the peak, going, once I'm there, then it'll be good. Then mm -hmm. I'll be enough. Then things will be whatever. Or they're just looking at it, and they're just thinking what they haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I still have this much to go. Yeah, but yeah. people don't ever just turn around and look at how far they've come. Yeah. Like when you turn around and you're three quarters of the way up a mountain, you're like, holy shit, I have come really far and I'm yeah. so happy to be here. And if I never got there, 
I'd still be completely okay with this. Yeah. And that's what I think everybody, like most people lose sight of is that they forget to turn around and be right. like, and I always, I've always done that. It's like, I still look back, I'm like, I could be, and I never really had a shitty office job. I had, I worked in an office for a little bit and it was still like, I was writing copy and I loved what I did and yeah, I was there yeah, from yeah. like 10 to three. And I still was like, that's way too much for me. Mm -hmm. But I look and I'm like, this is my alternative. When I'm driving in traffic to your house, I'm like, this could be my life every fucking day. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that makes me happy. Yeah. I love being in the traffic like that for a minute. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm Enjoy like, it. this could yeah. be my life. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's really important that you don't yeah. lose sight. It doesn't okay. matter if it's 10 years from now and you're like, yeah, 13 years ago I had yeah, a look job. How far you came yeah. and, uh, don't focus on how far you have to go. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's ways. Ev no matter what you do, somebody's going to be better. Yeah. And no matter how good you, even Michael Jordan, you still have to sit there and go, well, did Kobe do better? Is LeBron <laughs> doing better? Like, yeah. you can, somebody's change. gonna come back. <laughs> yeah. The league's change. It's different now. Yeah. Am I enough as a human? My self worth is based on how many points I scored. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Am I good at the arcade game? Maybe not. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>